It's not the end of the world. But sometimes it feels like it. It felt like the end of the world on April 8th of this year. I agreed to drive to Lebanon, Indiana to be in the totality of the solar eclipse. I agreed to take this road trip knowing the traffic that might ensue with my two and a half month old in tow because the eclipse fell on my husband Noah's birthday. I'll be honest. I didn't think it was going to be that cool. I'd seen a solar eclipse before, although not a totality, and I wasn't convinced that the experience would be all that different. But I agreed to go because, and come on, that's a pretty cool birthday present from the universe. I'm not afraid to admit that I was wrong. I was wrong. As those of you who may have been in the totality know, it's an experience that's hard to put into words. Other than to say, to me, it felt like the end of the world in the most beautiful way. It felt like the end of the world as the sky grew dark and the temperature dropped. It felt like the end of the world as I looked with my bare eyes at the moon blotting out the sun. It was a holy moment. And in that moment, I understood something more of our scriptures. I understood why the imagery of an eclipse is often used to describe a theophany or the breaking in of God to our lives. There's an eclipse in today's passage. Did you catch it? Acts 2, 19 through 20 reads, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. I get it. These are the signs that herald the end of the world, or at least the end of a world, a departure from what was before, because the Holy Spirit has broken into everyday life. Pentecost is this sort of departure. It is a day that celebrates the Holy Spirit breaking in amongst the disciples, who are then empowered to speak in multiple languages to the gathered crowds. This day, Pentecost, marks the end of the Easter season. Jesus is crucified. Jesus is risen. Jesus spends time with his disciples and prepares them for the work of ministry. Jesus then ascends to heaven, meaning that he's no longer physically present on earth. It's the end of one world and the start of another. The disciples are now the hands and feet of Christ in the world. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit equips them for this work. The arrival of the Holy Spirit echoes earlier theophanies like Moses and the burning bush or the giving of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. 
There is a sound like the rush of violent wind and divided tongues as a fire that come to rest on each disciple. The disciples begin to speak in the native tongues of those gathered, an act so amazing and perplexing that some wonder if they are drunk. This passage is in some ways a reversal of the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, in which humans are scattered and unable to understand one another. Here in Acts 2, the Spirit does the opposite and gathers together and enables conversation. The Pentecost story is thus an affirmation that God's creation is intentionally diverse. And, and that God desires communication across differences. It's furthermore an affirmation that we all have a role to play in this work. Sons and daughters and children, young and old, those of every ethnicity and race and language. This is Pentecost, a celebration. Some even call it the birthday of the church. Some churches put balloons and streamers up. I've always sort of wanted to do it, but I have a fear that we will lose a balloon to these rafters and that it will never come down. It's a celebration. It's a theophany, a start of something new, an affirmation of diversity and communication. But what does all of that mean for the church, big C church, today? Or perhaps, more specifically, what is Pentecost for the church when it feels like the end of the world? There are many things that can feel apocalyptic about this moment in history. But I'm thinking this morning about church decline. One online commentary I looked at said, how can we celebrate the church's birthday when the church feels like it's dying? Church decline can feel like the end of the world, especially for those of us who love the church. And let me tell you, I love church. I always have. We don't like to talk about this head on because it brings up grief and anxiety. But the reality is that a version of the church is passing. A version of the church where the vast majority of people went to Christian worship on Sunday morning. A version of the church where Christianity was dominant in Europe and North America. Although it's important to point out that that's not true of other parts of this beautiful globe we live on. That version is dying. And those of us who loved that version, we mourn it. But Pentecost offers the church universal an important insight in this time, which is that it's not the end of the world. It's the end of a world. Here are two things I know to be true. First, the church has not been the same throughout its history. The church has changed again and again and again and again since its inception. We are not the first church-going people to face something that feels like the end. Second, our faith 
tells us that death is not the final word. Right? The Easter season that we just celebrated tells us that death is not the final word, that there is resurrection. Pentecost reminds us that, yes, things depart from what was, they change, but that doesn't mean it's the end. Our faith equips us for this moment in the church's history. If we are brave enough to grieve what has been, and to dream new dreams of what might come. This, I think, is Pentecost for the church universal, the reminder that it's not the end of the world. It's just the end of a world. But what does Pentecost then mean for this church? (laughs) Been talking church universal, what about this one? Hyde Park Union Church. We are at a change point. We have been for some time. We have big decisions to make and are in the midst of making and acting on, right? About our building and our finances and how we organize our life together. About how to be this beautiful thing called Hyde Park Union Church in this season. Pentecost helps us embrace this change by reminding us to look for the Holy Spirit in our midst. As I reflected this week on the diversity that's present at Pentecost, I thought about the diversity of our space. The diversity, of course, that's present here in our congregation, diversity of age, gender identity, sexuality, race. It's so beautiful. But I also began to think beyond our congregation. For those of you who are most familiar with Hyde Park Union Church on Sunday mornings, Let me paint a picture for you of what happens during the week. There is so much that happens under this beautiful, although admittedly a little bit leaky, roof. We can laugh about it. We're working on it. (laughs) On any given day, you can hear prayers in multiple languages and faiths. Right now, as we worship here, the Korean United Methodist Church is gathering on the third floor for worship and communal meal. That's a Pentecost vision, if I've ever heard one. The Muslim Students Association uses a space on the second floor daily for prayer and study and relationship building, and they use the social hall for larger gatherings during Ramadan. If you hike all the way up to the fourth floor and catch your breath, you'll run into the Graduate Student Union. You Chicago students from all disciplines use the space for organizing and support. One of their leaders told me recently that this space was invaluable for their ability to secure a contract with the University of Chicago. If you peek into the basement, you'll find fridges, freezers, pallets, and shelves holding food that feeds over 100 households every Saturday morning. Many of you help with that project. Over 100 households every Saturday. Our social hall is transformed into a food pantry where clients pick their own food and are greeted by their neighbors with mutuality and dignity. Surely, friends, the tongues of fire hover above each of these activities. For we, like the diverse crowds of Pentecost, are all together in one place. This place on the corner of 56 and Woodlawn. 
This may not be exactly what the founders of Hyde Park Union Church had in mind when they built this edifice. Then again, maybe it is. I don't claim to know all the dreams of our forefathers and foremothers. I do know that we are presented with the opportunity of many languages, as it were. The opportunity to be in this new world together. So, finally, what does Pentecost mean for each one of us? Today's text makes use of inclusive language. They were all together. The wind filled the entire house. A tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. All of them were amazed and perplexed. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Do you hear it? All. 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 We all have a role in the work of God. We are all the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. If you think that I'm not talking to you, I promise you that I am. I promise that there is a role that only you can play. There is absolutely a place for you exactly as you are in this moment with exactly your gifts in this exact stage of your life. And if you are unsure what that role is, heed these words from theologian Howard Thurman. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. It's not the end of the world. It's a new one coming into being. Let's come alive with it. Amen.